2020 on schedules. It's a block of flats. Each flat is a symbol. First, just to note, there's a polygon and it's in a class called Area Rooms. And its area is down here. The big polygon is in a class called Area Flats. And what you notice about these is it's got a name which is type E gross internal whereas in the green class for rooms we've got type E bedroom one type E living dining type E bathroom and this is about the simplest setup to draw a room shape or a polygon gonna add surface and now I've got a polygon and there's its area and we'll call this room one Duplicate it. Call it room two. Change the shape a bit. Occasionally you might find it will lose its name, but it hasn't here. And that's now room three. It used to be an organized menu create report or to create a worksheet or a schedule, but it's just simple enough to go into either duplicate previous one or just make a new one and it's just a right click new resource worksheet so pwx tutorial area so I get a worksheet the room name or the room number and the area and at the bottom I want the total this is as simple as it gets it's just as in an Excel worksheet a function starts with an equal sign uh, and insert a function so I want area and then insert criteria the layer is temp layer I'm not looking in design layer viewports the class will be area rooms I also want the name there it is name so the name, you click on this box and it's already stored. There they are. Room 1, Room 2, Room 3. So we'll kick off with Room 1. And you get the expression. And then just click OK. There's a mistake there. It's the wrong layer. This layer is called Flat Types. Now click that again. There we go. And what's wrong with that? It's in square millimetres. So we go Times. Point no 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 no. There we are. Forty-four point five. It's in the wrong place. Let's cut that. Put that there. So it's room one. We can just copy those for room two and three. Paste them in. So this is room two, and this is room three. Just change the name and the expression. So this becomes room two, and this becomes room three. That is the simplest schedule. So this, the class is the is the C, N is, is the object name, and the layer is the L. So now we'll look at a flat type, which is a two bed, three person. And again, it's awfully simple. You can see we've done that's type E living dining so we don't need to dwell on that pardon the pun um, too much because we just go straight to our accommodation schedule um, so let's just look at the second floor so here's a flat so there's a flat type E um, and you can see the bedrooms are number two uh, so this is all hand entered data but the bit that isn't is this, is the gross internal area. And we're now looking in the symbol. We can show how that works. So let's, let's, let's just delete all that, put back the equal sign, uh, and insert the function, which is area. Okay. And then insert the criteria, which is, uh, oops, 
custom. Oh yes, you might have to do that custom. So the layer is temp layer, that's correct. It's not. The layer is flat types. Um, now this time, I, I don't want viewports, uh, but I do want symbols. Let's go again. Let's put the class in. This time the class is area flats. Now there are only eight. And let's add the name now, which is a symbol whose name is E gross internal. And then the objects that meet the criteria is now one. We can go OK and we get that same result. So, of course, for each flat was an area schedule, and this was the, the area schedule for flat type E. So, here again, we're looking for the area. It's in a symbol. Now, the name is the living room, and the layer is flat type. So, that's the living room, the bedroom one, the bedroom two, the bathroom, and the linen storage. There we can see the difference. So, the, 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 the accommodation internal, and most of the difference is circulation. So on a more three-dimensional BIM model, arguably you can do exactly the same procedure for for speed polyglot polygons drawn on the drawn on a layer called areas. But Vexworks has created some tools that are a little bit more sophisticated than that. So this is a Vexworks space. It's an extrusion. This has told me that. Um, that space was created in an earlier version. I think you can get the idea of this without going I don't know, it's an IFC space so it's a BIM object and there's a whole load of parameters and I must admit I have found this rather slow. I think you'll probably just want to play around with these yourself um, but there's an awful lot of quite sophisticated parameters that go into a space. So here it is, it's in the space planning toolbar. It's great if you can make it work. There's a whole bunch of number styles. These are will automatically give you room numbers. You can edit the layout of how you want that symbol. It's a symbol. Space tag simple. An awful lot of parameters and then security zones and fire zones. When I did this before I went through all the, the hoops and it took time uh, and it was a little complex for the, its horses for courses. It depends what you're doing. If this is a production information job with full BIM 2 protocols then the spaces may be helpful. So, so now I've got a space. Its height should be the layer a wall height. Well there's the area. There's an awful lot of parameters. Top boundary is the layer wall height. Okay, so there's my space. Now I've put it in a class called Diagram Bathroom um, which is a whole bunch of classes I use for this purpose and their diagram. Apartment, amenity, admin, so the different type of space, put it in a class. Of course, when you get one, you'll just, you won't go through this process again, you'll just copy uh, and paste 2D attributes, 3D attributes, oh, there we go, well, that's it, of course. Should be by class style. Default is not by class style. So now it will it will give me a class texture. Occupancy type, uh, right, uh, owner, tenant, letting, and all the rest of it. Um, this will create a very, you know, big spreadsheet. We did do it for one project where it was helpful because it was uh, with security and fire zones and various things like that. But it might be part of your BIM protocol, and therefore that is what a space does. Rather much simpler is instead of using the Vectorworks space tool, just use a massing model. In this case, it's a symbol. Inside that is a massing model. Now, a massing model will give you the basics for an area schedule. So here's its name, patient suite. This is a healthcare um, project. Uh, its name is in a box, okay, which you can see, there it is. Uh, and you can, it's got a little handle so you can move it into the right position. It's got I, IFC data, there it is, it's a, it's a building. I found it quicker and easier. I mean, just so you can see there's less parameters for a start. Um, we don't have a roof, so it's put the, hidden, put the roof class into a hidden class. Um, and there's its area. 
the, the class is diagram guest room. Within it is an ensuite bathroom and diagram bathroom. Now this does generate an area schedule. Oh, this is a washroom. Um, what's this one? This one is a, is a common common diagram, common common area. I think that's a physiotherapy room, is it? Yes, diagram clinic, physio, and there we are, number 17, physio, gym. Um, so this creates a schedule like this. What's different here is that it's a database header. Let's just edit the criteria. So in this case, its layer is not. We're picking up these objects anywhere in the drawing except for one particular layer but the record this is the important bit that the massing model is present so it's now going to count all the massing models including those in symbols that meet the criteria and lo and behold there are 72 um, and there they are and they've got a name so the this little arrow here uh, is the sort arrow beg your pardon um, whereas this gives you the choice of records for that massing model. You can select which one you want in the column. In this case I've got the name, so it generates all of the names, including those inside the symbol. Um, and this can be extended and you can include as many criteria as you like. Of course, if you were using spaces, you would have an, uh, uh, with far more parameters, you, you could have an enormous spreadsheet, which um, a lot of the Kobe people like spreadsheets. Notice the difference. In the most simple form of, of area schedule, we were simply making a spreadsheet. Now when you've got an object which has either a record that you've made yourself for record format or a built-in record format that comes bundled, packaged with the plug-in plug object, um, we'll just look at that again if we edit the criteria. Now, so this is the important bit, the record of massing model. I mean, they have, there, there is, these are all the objects within Vexworks that have records, and there's a lot of them. But they include, which we'll come on to shortly, they include doors, and they include windows. I like this because it then enables me to give a representation of the function diagram. And for a concept, the massing model does the job. If you're being paid more and they want a whole other, much more detailed range of parameters, then you can use spaces. So that area schedule can grow a bit more sophisticated. This is a hotel. If we just go down a bit further to the guest room floors, um, here the ratio of landlord to letable is much higher. That creates you this kind of a breakdown which you can then make into a cost estimate. So we've just seen that as soon as there's an object which has a, a record, that allows us then to create a component schedule. The contractor wanted a separate sheet for each door. This is a database header and its criteria in order to make them individual for each door, we said the field value ID label equals the door number, in this case, which is one. And if we go to Format Cells, it is an image rendered, thumbnail, rendered in OpenGL. You want to probably size it. We had set up the larger schedule, so in this case, the criteria is that it's got a field value, i.e. it's on the schedule. So this is picking up internal and external doors and it goes right through the whole job and there they all are. So here we had them all on one printable document. The reason we had to do them one by one is because you can't get these to repeat on each page like you can in an Excel sheet. So you can see along the top here, fire rating, acoustic security, uh, and of course it'll show you the, what, what, what the parameter is here. We use a field three. So thanks for watching.